Um, I was going to say y'all hear that. I, I can't do that now. Oh. <laughs> I can't do the transition. You don't have the video to the thing. So um, um, let's talk about some anime news, shall we? We shall. Let's do that. We'll hear something. Um, oh. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, two it new feels anime... odd not being able to say that. <laughs> exactly. Um, two new anime announcements are featured in our fun news section this week. First up, a TV anime has been announced for Hiroshi Noda and Takahiro Wakamatsu's No Longer Human in Another World manga, which imagines what would happen if an isekai protagonist was from a time far before video games and also was a real-life historical figure. Hmm. The cheerfully bleak comedy, their words, not mine, um... <laughs> Follows classic Japanese author Osamu Dezai, who passed away in 1948 and imagines if he had been reincarnated into a typical isekai game-like world after his death. Poor Dezai only wants to fulfill his poetic dream of finding the perfect place to die again. But his fantastical adventure with cute girls and superpowers keeps getting in the way. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, now that got me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I'm just glad it's not Owen and Obanaga again. Or yeah, exactly. you know, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. Stop with the warring states, period. I wonder how many references we'll get to his books. You know, how many of those will will hop in. I hope that they're using the dude's the dude's actual character type that they will. That'll be mm -hmm. peppered all throughout the whole thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, anime about people being reincarnated into weird non-human things are nothing new, but this week's revealed original series definitely takes it to another another level. Upcoming TV slapstick comedy. <laughs> Caught between a Yuri relationship, my life after it became a dummy head microphone one morning. A what? Yep. <laughs> Coming out in October, follows a protagonist who's reincarnated into a microphone. Um, ah. which is a, to me, a dummy head microphone, which is a type of mic embedded in a fake human head to faithfully recreate surround sound effects. <laughs> um said a person turned sentient microphone. Happens to be used by a group of high school girls in an ASMR club who are trying to win an ASMR high school championship. <laughs> Do they make it the national? Yep. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I, yeah. Kudos to, to whoever was <laughs> tripping that came up with this one. Holy yep. cow. Mm -hmm. um, now moving on to maybe my favorite um, story of the week. No. Well, it's up there. Um, anime and anime style figure makers can turn pretty much anything into a cute girl, including, as of this week, Transformers. Yes, I've seen some of these already. <laughs> um, oh, wow. That's right. Kodomokiya has begun taking orders for the upcoming Transformers v. Shoujo figures, featuring main Transformers characters reimagined as hot girls. First up is, of course, Optimus Prime with Megatron. Yep. Set to premiere in February, and a yet to be revealed Bumblebee design is still to come sometime in the future. Uh, <laughs> what do you think? Uh, do they uh, transform? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. I, yeah, I was, no, I was about to. It's past 10. <clears throat> <laughs> Yeah. They, they, oh, they transform all right. That jacket comes off. So, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. I, I mean, they're cute, but I, I, I saw the pre-order on. I didn't pay attention to the price on Optimus Prime, but I saw the pre-order notice on Megatron, and the thing's like 177 bucks. I was like, what? Yeah. The? Wow, that's a lot of dough. Is that right? <laughs> They're cute, though. I mean, they're they're cute. Give them, their sculpt is pretty nice. Yeah, you know. they're attractive. Good on them. Um, I just want the uh, the like the non anime fan Transformer fans who stumble across this. <laughs> what <laughs> am I just? Gonna... Yeah. Why? You don't understand. <laughs> don't, don't don't worry about it. It's okay. <laughs> Just accept. Don't think. Just, just accept. They're just, accept. Exactly. they're just waiting for the Dinobots line to come out. That's all. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, now, unauthorized clips of anime being posted to YouTube are nothing new and can be a source of frustration for the creators of the, of the show. Dropkick on My Devil decided to combat this issue by uploading clips to their own YouTube channel themselves. 
and it's actually working remarkably well. Uh, the staff are disheartened after an unauthorized clip episode clip got more than 5 million views. Cool. Wow. Um, but now, as we to post their own episode clips, the viewership on their own, own official channel has increased 1,474%. Holy. <laughs> Dang. Not bad. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that Not worked bad. out. Good for them. Good for them. Good for them. Exactly. <clears throat> um, all right, let's move on to some normal uh, anime news. Um, it's been a pretty major couple of weeks of news, and as you are all surely aware, not necessarily in a good way. Um, most relevant to the anime and manga world, beloved Yu-Gi-Oh! manga creator Kazuki Takahashi has passed away at age 60 after a apparent diving accident. He was found oh. off the coast of Okinawa with a snorkeling gear, and his cause of death was determined as drowning. Um... <laughs> The manga ran from 96 to 2004 and launched the massive franchise we are all well aware of. Yeah. Um, and, um, uh, of course, uh, photos posted um, and various um, uh, loving tributes um, provided about um, him. Um, this is posted by Eric Stewart, the English back, uh, voice actor of Kaiba. Posted uh, him, Takahashi, and Dan Green. Talking about how they met him and describing him as not only the creator of Yu Gi Oh, but like all of us, a fan. End quote. So, always sad to see that passing. Um, also, um, uh, worth note um, former, prime, J J former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was shot while giving a speech on Friday and passed away later that day at age 67. Um, but out campaigning for local candidate in Nara. He was Japan's longest serving prime minister, 2006 to 2007, 2012 to 2020. Um, a polarizing figure in, in politics, um, but known for the abenomics policy, which tried to counter Japanese uh, stagnation. Um, but uh, uh, further confusion was added to international reporting of the incident when a French politician made a tweet claiming the assassination was done by the far left and uh, included pictures of Hideo Kojima. The video game creator, right? Huh? Yeah, which uh, no, no, that, that's no, definitely not. <coughs> um, former J a DF, a mm -hmm. Greek television segment then shared the same picture of Kojima, identifying him as the alleged killer. No, whoa, no, no, wrong. Um, the politician later apologized for the tweets, saying he took an online joke for true information, and Kojima Productions released a strong statement after the fact. Saying Jim Production strongly condemns the spread of fake news and rumors that convey false information. So yeah, don't do that. Yeah, well, I would have thought their yeah. legal team would have come down all over that like a nuclear bomb. <laughs> like no, they, were, <laughs> they 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 definitely said they they would consider that. But oh yeah, yeah. holy, mm -hmm. not cool, not cool. Um, in more positive news, uh, Kenakamatsu has. He's going to the legislature. The creator of Love Hina nice. is going to the House. Um, wow. The Liberal Democratic Party won enough votes in the House of Councilors election on Sunday to secure a seat for Kenakamatsu, who will become the first manga creator to serve in Japan's legislature. Um, best known as creator of Love Hina, Nagima, and just ended Yu Kyu Holder in February during his campaign. Um, he's the founder of the J. Komi Digital Manga Service, now known as Manga Library Z. Um, and serves as managing director of the J Japan Cartoonist Association. Um, he's been outspoken in political matters in 2011, supporting freedom of expression in anime and manga, and often serving as a speaker to oppose expansion of copyright law and the imposition of foreign standards on Japanese works. Hmm. Okay. So, good luck to him. Um, this is definitely a, the kind of free expression that needs to be protected. Um, but yeah, I wonder if everybody in like the parliament now is like asking him to do caricatures. Yeah. Can you draw me exactly. on a pony? Oh, yeah. shut up. <laughs> we talk about this finance bill. No, 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 make me look like I'm on a spaceship. Ah, oh, damn it. Nah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, going back to uh, more serious news, July 18th will mark the third anniversary of the arson attack on Kyoto Animation mm. for Studio Bowling, and the studios announced a 10 minute memorial video will be streamed that day on their YouTube channel. Um, it will be released at 10.30 a.m. Japan time over 10 minutes, with a minute of silence at 10.35. Um, it will be available the rest of the day before being taken down, so it will only be available during the one day. The studio has also once again asked people to refrain from going to the site and do not send the gifts or flowers. 
Um, they said in their announcement, quote, with grief in our hearts, we've been producing animations while supporting each other and have kept moving forward day by day since then, end quote. So again, I just want to memorialize it and then move on. Yeah. Continuing on to less serious news, uh, live action anime remakes show no sign of slowing down over here in the West, regardless of their general reception by the people actually watching them. And it seems one live remake was not enough for the ever popular Death Note. That's right, a new live action adaptation of the franchise has been announced from the Duffer Brothers, the creators of Stranger Things. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. well you know, okay, so here's here's my feeling on that. <clears throat> okay. Let me just get on my soapbox here. Um, <clears throat> so you can't get worse than the first one. <laughs> you you literally can't get worse than the Netflix. Oh, I beg to differ, Steve. That sounds like a challenge. <laughs> Please don't take on that challenge, anyone. Anyway. Um, so no, so the, seriously, the Netflix version is 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 it, it, it's awful. Uh, the only thing it, 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 where we are. is uh, Ryuk in there, and even then, that's kind of iffy. Um, it and it made me hate Netflix for a long, long time. Um, oh. Wow. So I, you know, I'm glad that somebody that a group of people who actually know what they're doing, um, relatively speaking, with Stranger Things and are able to create a franchise out of that, a very popular franchise that has gone four seasons, notorious for a streaming platform that cancels things after two. Um, <clears throat> so I'm hopeful for that, um, and I do hope that they don't do a reimagining like they did the first time around that Netflix did. Um, it's so. What do you want? I I want. What do you want, I, Steve? <laughs> I I want a you you know I I don't need a blow by blow fan you know fan. I this is exactly. I want to be like the manga or the anime or you know, whatever. I, if you're gonna give me Death Note, give me Death Note. Don't give me garbage. If you want to reimagine certain parts of it, please by all means do so. I'm always up for reinterpretations of various innovative and, and quality thought but don't just give me garbage that's all i ask don't give me garbage and and make it enough to the death note that we can say death note and then go oh look at what the interesting thing they did with this i'm fine with change i'm just not fine with bad bad movie making fair enough yeah I feel strongly about this. I was about yes, to say, you feel <laughs> strongly on this, Steve. <laughs> um, the Pokemon family is now casting for a new unscripted reality series revolving around the, revolving around the Pokemon trading card game. Hmm. They're currently casting in Los Angeles, Los Angeles area, seeking, quote, energetic personal <laughs> candidates of all ages and their families, end quote, who are Pokemon trading card game players or enthusiasts. He shows it as a, quote, fun, uplifting Pokemon TCG project, end quote, on the application site, which asks various questions about the applicant's personality and competitiveness, their experiences with the card game, and, of course, what their favorite Pokemon are. What are they making? Money? Uh. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> no, I mean, I mean how, how, how do you do an unscripted reality television series Themed around themed around the trading card game. I don't know. You just film people playing Pokemon the trading card game. Can't be. It sort of sounds like what it is. You're looking for somebody who's fun and energetic. So you go to like a big hall and you have like the competitive ranks of Pokemon playing, and you just film that. I, I just I doesn't maybe seem to be like it would be very compelling, <laughs> but well, yeah. maybe it's an actual like okay, here are three people of different variety whatevers mm -hmm. and they're going into a tournament and we're following them and we follow them from yeah. you know at home we why mm -hmm. do you why do you love pokemon mm -hmm. why do you do this how did you first experience experience pokemon? Pokemon? yeah blah 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 and then you watch them go through the tournament and see how far they go yeah i mean that's about the only I bet, thing, I bet the only thing, thing i can think of yeah Unless it's and like a, a rags to riches <clears throat> story where like i found my first pokemon in the gutter it turned out to be a super rare Blah 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 blah, and I sold it. Then I got another one, and I sold some others, and now I run a chain of laundromats. You know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I no idea. From Pokemon cards in the sewer to laundromats. <laughs> they now call me the Laundry King. <laughs> oh, sweet. They made a card after me. 
<laughs> my favorite Pokemon is the one I made here on this playing card. It's Washermon. Oh, God. God. <laughs> <laughs> Who screamed this guy? <laughs> Well, the website opened this week to announce a new original TV anime called High Speed Etoile, made in collaboration with former Japanese racing series Super Formula. Um, the anime is set in the near future, where cars can safely travel at 500 kilometers an hour, and follows Rin, a former ballet dancer who suddenly thrown into the world of racing after having to give her dancing due to an injury. Huh. I've heard this story before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've heard this Didn't story we watch many the times. Show where there's guys going around the track and he's starting to like, you know, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, sorry, <laughs> different racing show, exactly. Like, um, From Mallet to explosion. <laughs> <laughs> um, an anime project has been revealed this week for a cute and fluffy isekai manga called "I'll Try My Best So I Can Pet and Pet in Another World." Um, 27-year-old Midori is reincarnated into another world after dying from overwork, which seems to be a theme, <laughs> and finds herself reborn as the youngest daughter of a noble family with a special ability to be loved by non-human beings and does her best to enjoy the world's fluffiness. So it sounds like a drama. Very serious adult. Uh, serious. Dealing with hard-hitting issues of the modern world. No Definitely, doubt. yes. Fua, fua. Um, Dealing with... All... Fl fluffy, fluffy slavery. That, those are yeah, exactly. Clearly, Clearly. they'll be tackling the tackling the hard issues of fluffy slavery. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, held a panel at Anime Expo last weekend to talk about the upcoming anime and revealed two new anime adaptations: uh, Korean manhwa Solo Leveling, will be animated in A One Pictures. Um, takes place in a world where gates to different dimension have opened up, and certain humans have developed supernatural powers. Uh, main character Jin Wu is the weakest of all these humans, but after a fatal injury, is chosen by a mysterious system and given the rare ability to level up in his strength. Hmm. Um, the, there's also an anime adaptation um, of a romantic comedy called Tomo Chan is a Girl. It Ooh, follows a yeah. boyish high school girl named Tomo who's yeah, trying to get her yeah. childhood friend to stop seeing her as one of the bros. Yeah. That's the thing. Um, uh, another manhwa announced a television project for this year. This one is also an isekai. Imagine that. Mm. Um, in why Rayliana, Rayliana, not Rayliana, Rayliana, <laughs> why Rayliana? <laughs> although, although I'd watch why Rayliana ends up the new expansion. It's a real good question, actually. <laughs> <laughs> why did Rayliana end up? Um, regular girl Yunha is pushed off a roof just as she's getting ready to go to college and wakes as Rayliana, a character from a novel whose death serves as catalyst for the story. She's determined not to die a second time and decided to change her fate no matter what. So Sure, names like Katarina Kleiss. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, very much. <laughs> um, uh, not Katarina Kleiss, but Katarina's uh, Shangri-La Frontier web novels, inspiring a TV anime next year in a game. Mm. Um, high school student lives in a future with full dive VR games, loves nothing more than finding the worst made glitchiest games and becoming best at them anyway. Mm. He dives into a brand new VR game called Shangri-La Frontier and finds he'll need all his expert gamer skills to discover the secrets the game is hiding. Um, TV anime also coming next year for a manga called Mashal Magic and Muscles. Um, set in a world where magic is used for everything, the main character lives in the deep in the forest. Unable to use magic, retains, spends all his time training and bulk, bulk, bulking up in stead bra. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One day, his life's put in danger. He must find out whether his muscular body will protect him from the magic users out to get him. So... Do you even lift bra the anime series? Yeah. Um, last up, TV Tokyo announced this week a new anime in the Duel Masters franchise coming this September. Shocker. Also this week, <laughs> Anaflex announced we'll host another Anaflex online fest this year with co-sponsorship from Sony Music on uh, the 24th. So um, we should expect some news about upcoming uh, popular, uh, sorry, upcoming anime and live performances there. Nice. Uh, two Riot Productions and Marvel Comics reveal the upcoming crossover, um, a comic book miniseries to debut sometime next year. It'll be part of the Ultraman comic book continuity that began between them in 2020, and is so far, so far focused on retelling the origins and stories of Ultraman himself. Hmm. In the new crossover series, Spider-Man, Iron Man, and Captain Marvel will enter the Ultraman universe and team up with Ultraman and Ultra 7 to battle kaiju and supervillains. Yeah, okay. I, I am oddly intrigued. Mm. <clears throat> mm. 
October of this year. Ready to feel old? You ready? Ready to feel mm. old? Mm. October of this year will mark the 20th anniversary of the airing of the first episode of Naruto. Holy, really? Yep. Wow. And an upcoming exhibition has been announced to celebrate the occasion. Naruto the Gallery will run from December 10th to January 31st in Akihabara. It'll feature anime footage and art highlighting how the characters grew throughout the series, their bonds, and their most epic battles. And of course, new collaborative works from video artist fans will also be screened at the event. As long as long as they're not going to play AMVs set to uh, Naruto <laughs> and Lincoln Park, yep. I'll, I'll be mm. fine. Oh exactly. no, that's probably guaranteed oh. to happen. Friends don't let friends make AMVs with um, Naruto and Lincoln Park. That's your PSA tonight, folks. In the end, it didn't even matter. <laughs> uh, that's all the news for this week. Thanks for watching. See you next week.